the diamond sutra doubt the foundation of the mind this morning we are coming live via facebook web mail also indeed doubt is the very foundation on which mind rests when you look into the eyes of the master you get the feeling of vast nothingness or emptiness but this is not the case with you doubt is the foundation on which mind exists therefore as long as you are in the mind thinking and imagining doubt will continue to lurk from behind the mental horizon and it will make your inward journey difficult indeed you are the subject doubt object of doubt and the process of doubting as well you are doubt and there is no other doubt you say deep within i move into myself in the moments of meditation and the more alone i feel i am alone if you have really been moving in to the deeper recesses you will feel aloneness but remember that feeling of aloneness never gives you a feeling that i am alone a feeling of aloneness and to say i am alone these are two different things i and aloneness then you are not alone then there is the experiencer the experienced the observer and the observed then you are not alone the other is there and who is the other the experience and in that case the experience becomes the other when you really fall deep within yourself you will not find yourself in any room that is the whole thing to understand and remember it is only on the surface that waves exist if you go deeper into the womb of the ocean you will not find waves how can you find waves in the depth there is no movement waves exist on the surface alone and they can exist only on the surface they need wind to exist a wave arises as a result of interaction between the wind and the sea water the eye can exist only on the surface because it needs the other the wind of the other and the wind of the other is needed for the wave of i to exist when you go deeper into yourself the wind is no longer there and when wind is no longer there how can i exist i and thou always exist in pairs they are never separate or divorced yes you will definitely find a loneliness but not i-ness a loneliness is beautiful let me remind you again the word alone is beautiful because it, it encompasses everything that is around all one that is how this word is constructed all one on the surface you are separate from all 
one age comes dissolves gives way to another way and this process thus continues but deep down when you go below the surface of the water you find there is no way there is just oneness on the surface you are lonely because you are separate from the all however in the depth or the deep recess when you have disappeared there is no distinction between you and all then all is one you are no longer there only aloneness is there when a certain amount of water from deep within the womb of the ocean interacts with the air on the surface a wave comes into existence if you have really known or the words emerge from the being not from the mind you can never say deeper i fall into myself the more alone i feel because then the subject i the object the experience and the process that happens between the subject and the object for instance you are seeing a wall wall is the other you are the one who is seeing the subject wall is the object and in between the two there is a process of seeing you are seeing the wall when this dis distinction disappears you cannot say that i feel alone you must be imagining that you are falling deeper into yourself that's why you say at that stage you can simply remain silent quiet but there is no one to see anything the mind can go on playing the games it can play the game of being alone it can play the game of being in prayer it can play the game of being in meditation but if i miss remains i am meditating i am praying then it is a game of the mind but if i miss remains then you can be certain that it is a game nothing real has happened that is the reason again the desire for the other will arise i is a word while iness is an intrinsic quality of i remember this i is a word while iness is the intrinsic quality of i i can even without its intrinsic quality exist however the inner quality iness cannot exist on its own without the support of the i and i cannot exist alone when i said i i am using the word i as a pronoun here it is not referring to anyone it needs the other to support it to feed it and to nourish it it will bring you back to the other that is why when you are lonely you start thinking of your beloved your friend your mother your father this and that a thousand and one things you create imaginary others doubts if a man is put in isolation for more than 3 weeks he starts talking to himself he creates the whole dialogue he himself is divided into two i and thou 
he becomes two, so the game can be played. I cannot exist in isolation with thou. Then you are bound to say, deeper I fall into myself, the more alone I feel, not lonely. Then you are bound to say, deeper I fall into myself, the more alone I feel. Certainly the feeling must be of loneliness. Never use these two words, loneliness and aloneness as synonym. You have to understand the nature of these two words. Loneliness is negative. Aloneness is positive. Loneliness simply means you are missing the other. The other is absent. This absence has created a gap in you. Aloneness means you are present. There is no gap in you. You are full of presence. You are utterly there. You are overflowing. Loneliness is the absence of the other. Aloneness is the presence of your eternal being. Then you can say there is only nothingness. No, if there is only nothingness, then there is no problem whatsoever. There is only nothingness, nobody to know, nobody to feel, then how can there be any kind of problem? Then this, there is no possibility of doubt, doubt disappears. How can doubt be there? And when doubt is not there, the one who doubts, the doubter, cannot be there either. No, you are there. That nothingness is bogus because you are there. How can there be nothingness? It is just your idea. By and by everyone will begin forgetting about you. You may be present, would sit in the corner and just sit either with the closed eyes or with the open eyes, but you will remain so absent to them that by and by they become oblivious to you. How can that be possible? One day it happened, I was supposed to drop my car for service. So I dropped the car for service and I called my driver to come and pick me up from a particular place. So he did not know the place where the car was to be dropped. So I told him I will come out on the main road and stand up there. The area, the address I gave him. I was waiting for him on the roadside. I leaned over to a post, put my briefcase between my legs and took a nap. Taking the support of the post, the driver came. He could not find me. He was around on that road but he could not find me, so he went back. Then I called him, I said, what happened? He said, I did not find you anywhere. I said, I was standing there by the post and I took a nap. You know what he said? He said, because your eyes were closed, you were taking a nap, that is why I could not find you. I had to ask him if you were asleep or I was asleep. If my eyes were closed but your eyes were open, you could see me standing there. If I did not see you, that's a different story. But this is what happens. By and by, everyone will begin forgetting about you. 
you may be present with sit in the corner or just sit either with closed eyes or with open eyes but you will remain so absent to them that by and by they will become oblivious of you. I experience this every day. I am not dependent on anyone in any way. I do my work from A to Z by myself because the physical work, the livelihood is essential for the sustenance and if I have to continue the spiritual work, I have to make myself so self-sufficient physically as far as my living is concerned that I am not dependent on anyone. I may be sitting right there, but I will remain invisible to everyone, even the visitors have become oblivious of my presence. It helps me tremendously. No one disturbs me now. Once you deepen in your innerness, you will become as nobody. By and by, everyone will accept that your presence is no presence, as if you are not. But that will not make much difference. You will be there. This is what will happen to you. You are there and you say nothingness is. You are oblivious of yourself. You do not take note of yourself. And otherwise you are there. If you are not there, who is saying that nothingness is, then there is nothingness when you are not there. And this is pure nothingness. This is pure nothingness. In that purity, enlightenment happens, nirvana happens. That is the most valuable place to be, the most spacious place to be. It is the space everybody is searching for because it is unlimited, infinite and its purity is so absolute that it cannot be polluted by anything. Even if you are not there, there is light, there is consciousness and there is no I. I is like eyes, frozen consciousness. Consciousness is like melted ice, liquid, or even better, even the water has evaporated. And when water evaporates, it becomes invisible. Remember, there are three stages of water. The first stage is that of ice, which is frozen. It is frozen, it occupies a larger area. When ice begins to melt, it becomes fluid-like, it begins to flow, there is a flow. And then when the water is put on the fire, it begins to evaporate and slowly and slowly it begins to disappear. Consciousness is like melted ice, liquid or even better. Even the water has evaporated and has become invisible and you want to know why there is pain still and why it is so painful to become aware that it is an illusion. It is painful because the eye starts the natural death or dissolution. To recognize the other as the illusion to recognize love and love as illusion is very hard. You can never recognize love as illusion because then the end of I becomes eminent. 
If you drop you, the I cannot exist. And if you have not known the beauty of dropping I, and you may want to know if it is natural, if being alone is basic and very essence of your being, then how could the elusive idea of becoming one, of falling in love with somebody eternally, can filter into being in the first place. Such idea can come only because aloneness is basic and essential. The Hindu scripture says that God was alone. Just think. Just visualize God alone and alone and alone for eternity. He became fed up with his aloneness. It was monotonous. He wanted to have a little play. He created the other and started playing the game of hide and seek. When you are tired of the play, when you become fed up with the play, you become a Buddha again. You again drop your toys that are created by you. It was you who have put the value on them. The moment you withdraw your value, they disappear. You remember you have put value on your spouse. And the moment you withdraw the value, it disappears. And you are again alone. The Hindu concept is, is tremendously valuable. It says God was alone. It became monotonous. And when God became monotonous, He created the world, the other, just to have a little fun, to have a little dialogue. Then again and again one comes and feels tired and bored with the other and disappears into oneself, again reaches to one's nothingness and becomes a god. You are all gods who are deceiving themselves. It is your choice. The day you choose not to be this way, you will be free. It is your dream. Because of aloneness, because aloneness is the essential quality of the being, the other has been created. You just try it. Go for a view few weeks to the mountain and sit alone and you will feel very good. Everybody is tired of relationships and fed up and bored. Go to the mountain and sit silently. You will feel so beautiful that after three or four days, five days, seven days, three weeks, you will start thinking of the other again. The woman or the man will start being attractive to you. You forget all the nastiness and all the naggings that you have faced. You forget all that the spouse has been doing to you. You completely forget everything and the spouse again becomes beautiful, loving and again fantastic. Then you have to come down from the mountain to the plains for two or three days with the spouse. Things are going to remain beautiful. The new honeymoon and after two or three days things become difficult again. And again you start thinking how to meditate. How to be silent. This is how life goes on. Just watch your consciousness and its fluctuations and through it you will know the whole process of existence. Because you are a miniature existence, the micro, 
The pendulum of consciousness goes on swinging between meditation and love, between aloneness and togetherness. And because all the religions of the world up to now have been either love-oriented or meditation-oriented, they were fragmentary, they were not total. I am giving you the total religion. I am not asking you to choose anything. For example, Buddha had chosen meditation. He gives you the love for meditation and no other love. He teaches you only to be alone, absolutely alone and nothing else. It is good. It is tremendously good for people who are tired and fed up of the world. He was tired and fed up with the world. He was a king, not a beggar. He was tired of women. His father has bought all the beautiful girls from the kingdom for him. He had one of the most beautiful palace. If you get all the beautiful women of the world in your house, how long can you be able to live there? You can imagine, yes, I can live life long. Just think of it. One is more than enough. And now, all the beautiful women of the kingdom were there. It must have been madman. If he escaped, it is no wonder. All the pleasures were arranged for him. Every kind of pleasure was there. If he became fed up, it is no wonder, he moved to the other pole. The other was too much. He escaped into the forest and became alone. There are religions which are the religions of meditation, Buddhism and Jainism. There are religions which are the religions of love, Christianity and Islam. And this has to be understood. Jesus is a poor man and so is Muhammad. It cannot be accidental. Mahavir is a king and so was Buddha. The two kings have given to the world the religion of meditation and two poor ones have given to the world the religion of love. Poor cannot be fed up with the other. The poor has not had much of the other and therefore he hankers for the other. The other may be woman, money or power or prestige or God. It makes no difference. The other is needed. Christianity and Islam are both religions of prayer and love, love for God prayer for God. In Buddhism and Jainism there is no place for God at all because there is no place for the other. Your aloneness is enough. In Jainism and in Buddhism there is no existence of anything like prayer. The word prayer has not been heard. They know only of meditation and Christianity knows nothing of meditation. These are not accidental. They show something about the founder. I am giving you a total religion. A religion which allows you both when you are feeling tired with the other, move into meditation and swing into meditation. When you are feeling tired of aloneness, swing into love, both are beautiful, both are contradictory, but through the contradiction, a tremendous joy arises. If you have only, if you have only one, you will not have the kind of richness. You will continue to hanker for the other. One can give you silence. Certainly one can give you silence. Oh, 
can give you great joy but both together give you something infinitely precious and incomparable both together can give you a silent ecstasy or peaceful joy at the innermost core you remain utterly silent and on the periphery there will be a dance when silence dances or silence sings that is the richest the peak of a greatest experience there is nothing more beautiful than that i have heard george bernard shaw once at a party was sitting alone at the edge of the room his hostess came over to him and inquired are you not enjoying yourself Shaw replied, that is what I am doing. He has hit upon a great truth. A great insight is there. One's self is all anyone can enjoy. Life starts taking the quality of silence. But if you can enjoy only yourself and never the other, then you will miss the other dimension be capable of enjoying both oneself and the other two and that is what i call the whole man the holy man the totality the religion which encompasses both meditation and love in one togetherness